Hello, everybody. I'm going to be quiet for a moment, because if you turn up your volume really loud, you can hear birds chirping. Oh. But that's aside the point. That's not nearly as important as the fact that it is Monday, April 18th, and this is 2011, and this is Day 9 Daily number 280-something. It's so hot, I don't even care. It's Fun Day Monday, where we impose constraints that ruin the latter metagame. That is correct. We have seen such crazy things as the trifecta play, where you announce three units. And you're only allowed to build those three units. In fact, so awesome that there was a comic about it on BanelingBarbecue.com, which I will notably plug. Oh, yes. So good. And, and, we've done other things like having no queen, having mass queen, having mass overseer, no warp gates. And today, I impose the worst constraint of all. It was what we call the Zerg hate build. It is the following. This is what we're going to be watching today. No queens, no roaches, no hydras, no mutas, no banelings. No, you can build queens, sorry. No roaches, no hydras, no mutas, no banelings, and only 12 zerglings all game long. Oh! That's right, because I wanted people to stop doing their, oh, I built roach hydra, and I got force field again, and I lost, Ugh, got so imbalanced, and I built mutas, and he had units that killed those too. There's a lot of very sad zerg players out there who are doing a lot of very, very hard things. Wanted to change it up a little bit. Wanted people to build the most obnoxious set of high-tech units possible, the Ultras, the Corruptors, the Broodlords, the Queens, definitely the Queens, and most importantly, those Infestors. Mmm. Mmm. Now, the typical structure of the daily is that the games get more and more high quality as the daily goes on. Today, we're going to do something a little bit special. We're going to start out with games from some tip-top Grandmaster level players and end with bronze. Perfect. That is so good. Now, the intro player today is none other than FXO's Chef, who will be showcasing today's strategy. FXO's Chef not only is a complete and total outrageous sicko badass Zerg number one ranked Grandmaster, but also he's coming on Friend Day Wednesday this week, so in two days he will be on the show doing all the very fancy introduction, and look at how sweet he is. Thanks, you too! Oh my gosh. He is actually the sweetest person in the whole world. I met him, and like I met him actually at MLG Dallas, and he came up to me. He's like, "Hey, you, hey, I'm Chef. It's like so great to meet you." And I was like, "Oh, great to meet you too." And he laughed, a beautiful angelic laugh, and everyone around just sort of turned and was like, "Yeah," and I just felt a good outlook on life due to his presence. His aura was just so wonderful. Ah. Oh. And he is scary. He is ferocious. And look, well, thanks, you too. Just like so happy an exclamation point. He doesn't need to type that, but he does. And there he is. He's against Levin. I can't hear you very well, Levin. Why is that? It's because the sound was disabled. Take a drink. <laughs> Whoopsie daisies. Take a drink. There it is. Levin. I'm Levin it. Ba 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 ba. He's scouting over to the left side. Now the question is, how will FXO Chef open up with this absolutely no roach, no hydra, no muta, no baneling, and only 12 zergling style? It appears he's rushing for a gas geyser. Oh, so important for... Oh no, he's doing the usual build. The Morrow build. The... Ugh, I want zergling speed really fast build. That's no fun. But that's fine, because we trust Chef, and Chef is so good. Chef is the man. And meanwhile, Levin making a forge, taking an expansion. Ba 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 ba. Levin doing everything he can, just making sure that he, uh, you know, no proxy hatches up there. You might be saying proxy hatches. Who would do that? People who submitted for Fun Day Monday. Very good. There's the cannon going down. Chef, uh, gonna be constructing some zerglings with speed. Everything is as expected. There's the expansion going down. And keep in mind, Chef can only build a maximum of 12 zerglings all game long. He's gonna send these guys forward, but they're gonna be repelled by this one single cannon. He has to be a little bit careful. Uh-oh, will Levin be able to wall off in time? Well, at the very least, he'll get his cannon up. There's the Cybernetic Core and the Pylon, thereby constructing complete wall off. Grandmaster level play. You thought you couldn't do it. Don't worry about it. All you have to do to get into Grandmaster League is uh, just run your Zerglings right up his ramp. And there we go. We see Levin. He's going to defend with probes, but he's going to lose quite a bit of probes. And look at this. With only a handful of Zerglings, we're seeing Chef unleash a little bit of pain. Not a problem whatsoever. The problem, though, for Chef is that he can't really do much at this point. So he's just going to go ahead and expand. <laughs> 
Why not? He's at the six minute mark. He has no ability to defend it whatsoever, but he's just going to trust in the fact that Levin is going to be a little bit preoccupied. Excellent. Fantastical. Going to go ahead and advance things right along. We're seeing Levin do a little bit of chrono boofting. That's good. Doing the usual style, he's going to be getting a plus one upgrade. Now, Levin would ordinarily, you know, likely be going for some sort of big warp gate push. There's warp gates going down. What's Chef doing? Well, he's just now begun to make a layer, so that means he can just start to build the units that he's allowed to build. And see, look at these other six Zerglings. No more Zerglings for you, Chef. Not allowed to build any more all game long. You are done with those tier one or two units. You can't build any more. That is it. So we are now seeing, it looks like, oh, plus one almost done. Warp Gate's getting done. I'm loving it. He's just doing his usual thing. <gasps> plus one armor, a fantastic upgrade to get. Chef, oh yeah, just taking another base. If I can't build any more units, I may as well build an extra base. And Chef, what are you doing? What's that Hydralist den for, Chef? Are you going to build a Hydra den on me, Chef? Are you going to build any Hydras on me, Chef? I hope you don't. He's getting plus one, plus one upgrades. He's getting the Zergling upgrades. There's the Infestation Pit. What is this? I feel like I just found dirty magazines under my child's pillow or something like that. I don't know why your child would put them under his pillow. That's kind of like the most easily, obviously spottable place in the world, unless he thinks that the dirty magazine fairy will come and give him money for it, which um, I'm sure in some households exists. But still, I just feel a deep sense of shame. Chef, what is... I thought I raised you to be a number one Grandmaster Zerg, and look at you just building Hydra Dens when you're not allowed to. But no, 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 Chef would never dream of doing such a thing. He's doing a clever thing. He's leaving the potential open to transition into an emergency. Holy shit, I really want to win this game instead of getting a Fun Day Monday replay. He's just having a backup plan in case failure is coming. But uh-oh, a Void Ray is coming. Levin. Dun. Two Stargates. Dun. Chrono boosting away. What will Chef do to defend? He has queens out, but there is no creep joining anywhere on the map. So what does Chef do in response? Well, he just builds more drones because, man, he certainly can't kill them fast enough. Is that your Hydralisk Den that I found under your pillow, Chef? That better not be your Hydralisk Den. Okay, I understand. I understand. Spring the creep out. Adding on more queens. Will there be a crisis? My god. Honestly, no matter what Chef does, it would probably be pretty easy to win at this point, but no, look at Levin killing off all the drones. What will Chef do in response? He has queens coming! Oh, uh oh there's an intense micro battle that ensues. The beach balls get thrown down. The infested Terrans spawn. The Void Rays run away. <laughs> Feeling so evil, getting yet more Void Rays. Yet more gateways of Robo Facility. A third base from Levin. ba 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 we're seeing now spore crawlers get thrown down. A maximum of 10 corruptors getting constructed. Uh oh, uh oh, queen getting taken out again. Levin, feeling as though he's applying an adequate amount of pressure. How on earth will you deal with this, Chef? FX opens Chef, feeling to be in a little bit of an awkward situation. <gasps> Killing it off. Oh no, and he is taking out the spore crawlers. How are you going to possibly be able to defend this? How about with all that? Yeah, and then a fungal growth catches him. See you later. And then a wonderful thing happens. We get to see all of these corruptors turn into broodlords. Very good. And all these queens get together for the party. All the overlords just clump them over and just send them a little bit to the left. So that way I can make a big box and do one of my favorite, favorite bedtime stories. This is a bedtime story that I would tell my children. Which I swear I'll have. I mean, I just have to, you know, get a girlfriend and then get a wife and then, you know have kids but you know when I, I i'll work on that in a moment but when i have kids i will tell them a famous bedtime story told by zergs that are maxed around the world once upon a time 1a sleep well little boy sleep well so there it comes 1a one of the most renowned bedtime stories a classic translated into hundreds and thousands of languages simply by printing it in that country and look at this. I just want to point out how many units are dying here. If you guessed zero, you guessed correctly. Good game. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Levin did take a little bit of a tumble to FXO's chef, Matt FXO chef's mass expanding techniques. Isn't that cool? Isn't that easy? Now, some of you might be saying, well, pfft. 
Levin got to do whatever he wanted. Oh, that's unfair. This is not an accurate representation. Or excuse me, Sheth got to do whatever he wanted. And Levin messed up the wall and this is not an accurate representation. I call lies and slander. This is yellow journalism, Day 9, and I say scoff, 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 don't worry, because we have none other than Spanishiwa. Ooh, I will not make any of the tier 2 units. That's a Spanish accent for any of you curious. Yes, Spanishiwa, the very famous Zerg whose name is Michael. He submitted games. I was actually on Skype call with him while he was doing some of these games, and we shall see none other than Spanishiwa. And his stream, what zerg does he have in store for us today? Well, it's going to be no roaches, no hydras, no mutas, no banelings, and only 12 zerglings all game long. And he's against none other than the tip-top SEA player, Kapok! Kapach! Kapich! Kapish. Spawning is the none other than the red Protoss in the bottom corner. We have Vile Spanishwa. Um, Spanishwa? Did... I know his name is Spanishiwa, but it looks like it was labeled as Spanishwa. Did I get trolled? Is this really Spanishiwa? Spanishwa, if you're watching, you gotta message me on Skype. That is you, right? Why, why can't you spell your name right? I literally just noticed this. Look at this. Here, I'll even... Look, let's zoom in on... Oh, it doesn't work. That's a terrible interface design, but look at that. It's Vile Spanishwa. My name is Spanchwa. I am the famous Italian Zerg, and you'll notice I'm using the same accent. It is not a problem. Capiche? All right, Capiche is good, though, and that is his name, right? Capiche is uh, going to be at the um, south position as the Protoss pieces. We're going to see uh, Spanishiwa. He is Ooh! building the hatchery you tried to block, and Capiche is like, lol. Spanishiwa is so happy about that. It Let's see here. Let's see here. It's the right one. Character code limit. Oh, all right. Cool. All right. Cool. Um, bam. There it is. Spanishiwa. That is correct. Thank you, Michael. Anyways, we do see. Kapoch! Capiche! Putting one guy in the gas geyser. Now, what is this? Now, let us take a break from everything that is Fun Day Monday for a moment. And let's talk about a very clever build that we're going to see done by this player. Ah. <sighs> What we're going to see Kapach do is he is going to mine just enough gas to get warp gate. In a sense, what he's doing is he is warp gate rushing. You see, he has 52 gas, and he's already popped all the guys out of gas. Now, why would he do that? Well, he's going to build an expansion, and then he's going to chrono boost out warp gate as fast as possible, and hopefully have enough units to be able to hold off any sort of pressure. Not that there could be any, because it's only going to be 12 Zerglings, but it's not a big deal. Check it out. Yeah, look, here it comes. Here comes the Cybernetics Core. It's not even done yet. He's at 18 food. Nexus. Bam. Chrono Boost in a way. Put some guys back in back gas. Put them get back, back in bass. I can talk. We're seeing, oh, it looks like a Zealot being made. Fantastic. Doing a little bit of defense. Now, what's going on in Vile Spanchwa? Spanchwa's base. Yes, he is indeed building drones. Getting queens out. Excellent. A fundamental component of a build where you can't actually have units. So now we're seeing the Zealot of Kapach Kapish moving around. Uh-oh. It's getting a little scoot in action going down. Kapach going to back up. Get himself some extra gateways. Oh! Blocking your front door. And look at that. The drone saved by Spanishiwa. How brilliant. He gets to come home and look at him with his dual Zergling escorts. Fantastic. But Kapach knows well exactly how to defend his front door. He's going to create a nice fancy wall of gateways. And I'm starting to look at Kapach's build. And I'm going... Ooh. Ooh. And look at him. Oh, walling himself off. That, my friends, is a sexy build. I would just like to reiterate, on 18 food and Nexus went down, Warp Gate getting when? When is that Warp Gate getting done? Right on time. Mm, didn't get slowed down at all. Ooh. Oh my god, I'm so glad I'm doing this with my glasses, because with your contacts, it's not as sexy. I can't be like, ooh, ooh, ah, uh, ooh, oh, ooh, ooh. Right, with the glasses, we totally can, mmm. Yeah, getting that expansion down just in time. And what this means, though, is that Kapoch can do a really effective five gateway push. Probably far more effective than your usual three gateway expand build. So that is something I want to be trying out after this. What's a good counter to that, you might say? 
Well, I would say no roaches, no hydras, no mutas, no banelings, and only 12 zerglings is going to turn out to be a fairly effective counter. Thanks to Spanishiwa. A lot of queens going down. Evolution Chamber going down as well. Woo! Melee attacks getting upgraded. There's the Infestation Pit going down. Very good. Spanishiwa going to be building spine crawlers. Those seem pretty important. Hallucination going down, so that way he can scoot a boot. Excellent. There it is. Oh, Phoenix is coming down. And this is what you're probably thinking if you're Kapach. You're going you're gonna to be like, all right, is there going to be roaches? Is there hydras? Well, I see a lot of queens. Huh? He's probably looking at it and saying in whatever language he speaks. What? And I think that's a very reasonable response there. There is Kapach checking on in. Oh, man, poor Kapach. Look, he's even sending another phoenix. He seriously just sent two phoenixes in, and he lost one and was just like, you got to be kidding me. You have to be kidding me. And look at this. The queen's there to do a little bit of a blocking. There's the hive coming down. And poor Kapach is just like, hey, what? What? I don't know why Kapach sounds so much like Droopy the dog, but he certainly does, doesn't he? He just, you know what? He's not building any roaches. Droopy the dog, excellent. Apparently, despite having paws, is just microing. I have a fancy warp gate build. I'm going to be building more stalkers. Me. Continuing to chrono boost away. Twilight Council coming out. Oh my god. Does it this actually makes me wonder if any of you have ever watched Droopy the Dog. He has like a sidekick smaller dog named like Drippy, I think it is, which is not an okay name for a smaller dog. But you know, you know how Drippy sounds? You know what? Exactly the same, just in a higher pitched voice, right? There's Droopy the You know what? And Droopy the Dog's like, please go right ahead. I don't what were the producers thinking? They're just like, man, it's hard to improve on Droopy the dog. It's such a perfect character. Just put him in there again. You don't see that in other cartoons. It's not like Batman and his lower ally, Bitman, you know, where it's like, oh my god, the city's in trouble. We need to save everyone. I absolutely agree, Batman. Let's make our way to the Batmobile. That would be the... Actually, more people need to do that. That would be the perfect thing, Bitman. <laughs> I am a dark knight. I'm just a little bit smaller. Here is Twilight Council from Kapach going down, continuing his five warp gate play by taking another expansion. I'm liking this. He's getting a forge down so we can get some cannons and detection, but still maintaining a large unit count while we're seeing Spanishiwa do absolutely nothing. Spanishiwa uh, getting the greater spire. Hmm. In the unit counting station, we can see. Uh oh, actually. I can just refer to this. BAM! Thank you, Blizzard, for that overlay. We can see Spanishiwa is, like, so far behind in the food count, the Nidus Network going down. Oh, Spanishiwa. What will you be doing? There's a Nidus Network. Uh-oh. Where is he going to be building it? It's not like I've seen this replay before. Where is he going to be building that Nidus Network? I should have written the time down as well as the place. <gasps> Spanishiwa. There he is, coming in with that. Oh, Corruptor's coming in. What are you doing with your Corruptors? Ah, oh, nothing. I'm just going to be morphing some Brib Roars. Oh my god, that's a lot of queens in there. Quickly, spread the creep. Spread the creep. Make more Broodlords. We even got some Infestor buddies here to hang out with the party. So we're seeing, uh-oh, uh-oh, what does Kapach do? He's trying to check around, but wait a minute, there's a base over here. Spanishiwa with his extremely angry nice Worm that's just kind of permanently in that... Uh, uh, and then, of course, he just sort of... It's terrible life being a Nidus Worm. That's all you do is puke units up around the whole universe with all your buddies. I mean, at least as a Broodlord, you get to chuck other species out um, as a weapon from your shoulder. But, oh no! Kapok, what are you going to do? It looks like Kapok. Or Kapach, I still don't know how to say his name. Attacking with everything. Ooh, hallucinated Phoenix. Letting him see up to the high ground. Spine crawlers in the front. More spine crawlers getting thrown down by Spanishiwa, but Spanishiwa has the undestructible force of destruction. Moving in through the main. Kapach does have plenty of photon cannons in the main. Trying to morph in more blink stalkers, but these blink stalkers in the main gonna be able to take out the hive. Get out of the way, overlay. We need to see the action on the screen. Get out of the way. Interface. Oh my goodness, total destruction everywhere. You didn't see this replay time, did you? Let's go ahead and hide that. Ooh, how embarrassing. Whoopsie daisies. 
Got to put another overlay up to hide that. No big deal. So we're seeing, per usual, more things getting puked out. <laughs> Puking it all out. Fantastic. Now, how will Kapach end up dealing with this force? He sees the Infester. He's going to have to aim carefully. All right. He has to pull back because there are so many freaking brood Look at this. Another Nidus Worm. More Nidus Worms popping out. This is genius. You probably didn't think that you could do any sort of fancy Nidus Worming late game action with this sort of build. You can. And right now, we're seeing Kapach take the hurt, take the pain, take the damage. There's another Nidus Worm popping out, getting ready to just, come on, puke a little for me, Nidus. Puke a little for me. And there he is. He's going to try to blink up, but of course, Broodlords are indestructible with queens underneath them. Yep, target fire, target fire. Oh, nope, transfused. Missed a little bit. Oh, transfuse him, transfuse him. Oh, got to keep transfusing, transfuse, transfuse. Transfuse. Queen's rolling in. Are you guys getting the sense that this strategy is actually unbelievably awesome? When all your units have like a million hit points, you just keep hitting that T button. And look at all that purple. Look at all that purple. That's mana. Ooh, look at that. That's mana. Mm, mana. Mana. Mm, mana. Oh, it tastes so good. Oh. Kapach is just like, I don't know what to do. And Kapich was like, don't worry, hang in there, Kapach. Referencing the Droopy the Dog joke. Don't know if any of you caught that. It's quite funny. So there he is. There's coming out more and more infestation. A little bit more of the healing action. What do you do? Spanishua is just going to do one of the most well-known bedtime stories of all time. 1A. So despite feedbacking every single unit there, there's plenty of transfuse for that one Broodlord. This is awesome! Again, to make the analogy, this would be like if one Marauder could be healed by as many Medivacs as you wanted. I would go 15 Medivac for a Marauder! I would, that would be so great! I would like keep hitting the T-Stim button. I was like, I don't care. Is it cool down? It will never be anything but max life. That's what it's like with Brood Rorbs and your Queens. So cool! Now, it looks like... Uh-oh. How will Kapok end up making his way out of this? Well, he's trying to rebuild with a massive stalker force. There's the Archons coming in, getting taken out. Oh, no! It looks like he cannot quite break through. Ruffle. There is the Ruffle going on right now. Daynon made me do it. Thank you, vile Spanchwa. Spanchwa. Going to be a little bit of tension continuing on. Oh. <gasps> Watch making a counterattack. Oh no! Can't believe I missed the Nidus! Don't worry about it! That's kind of a weird place for a Nidus Worm to be anyways! So Kapach is going to be heading up to the top right corner! He's going to try to find some way to break in and do a little bit of damage. But we're going to see Spanishua throw down as many spine claws as he can. Look, come on! Come on! Come on, guys! Run, run, run! And, it, oh, I'm going to break it! Oh, wait, no, I'm not! Oh, no! Oh, hey, that's going to be... That's actually pretty well defended. Uh, an accented GG. Very good. Excellent. Cool. Now it's time for what I would like to make a Funday Monday tradition, which is the fail submission of the set, right? We always get one fail submission. We're going to watch through it at times eight speed. It is on Lost Temple. I think it is this one. Yes. Yes. All right, we have Romulus. Oh, Romulus, the fail submitter of today. Romulus submitted this game. Good luck. Have fun to you. So, how's Master League? Uh, oh, easy. Miviet Saga is the enemy. Romulus, of course, one of the most well-known characters from the uh, Star Trek universe. But it's, it's actually a struggle for me. Do I make a broad cultural reference? You know, like, you know, do one of these things. People are like, that's Spock. Or do I actually make a really specific Romulan reference that really shows how embedded I am in the universe of that series. It's a struggle. Struggle. I will just leave it to the chat to think of all the funny Romulus jokes that they want to make. Romulus now. Getting the double gas early. Oh, he's even getting spine crawlers up. Let's open up all the important tabs so that way this game feels way, way more important. The drones moving around, the spine crawlers easily repositioning themselves. We're seeing Miviet Saga, the Zerg player who has no restrictions placed upon him, getting a Hydralisk den, and Romulus getting an infestation pit. What will he be doing with it? Oh, he's getting a queen. Is he getting any infestors out? Yep, there's some infestors. Oh, looks like Romulus's mouse ran out of battery. I thought your technology was far advanced beyond any others in the 
entire galaxy. And I know that there are people who are fact-checking me on that in the chat right now. That's not entirely accurate. You see, it's so scary whenever you make any joke and there's some Trekkies or Trekkers or however they want to be referred to, if they're watching, because they will rip your heart out. I do not want to possibly step on the toes with such a dedicated community. Holy cow, man. I mean, I have seen the balanced discussion threads with my community, but Trek folks, man. Romulus, all I have to say is respect, bro. Respect. Respect, man. That's all I'm saying. There's the Spire popping down right now. Oh my gosh, he's going for a Broodlord rush. And he has these Infestors here. His front is well defended. He has almost nothing mining minerals. But you don't need minerals when you're doing this sort of strategy. <gasps> what is Miviet Saga going to do? He's moving around. He's trying to find a point of vulnerability. He's pulling back. No, he's going to move out for an attack. He's moving down for... Okay, he's just going to pick off some of the Creep Tumors. And he's pulling back. Now, I just would like to point out how silly it is to pick off Creep Tumors when you're also building Creep Tumors. Catching my drift here. He is spreading creep over there! Stop him! Alright, now spread some creep over here. Good. Everything's going according to plan. There it is. Uh-oh, a Nidus Worm. How exactly will Romulus be able to defend? Does he have any defenses up yet? <gasps> he almost has a greater spire. Here it comes. Will he be able to... Oh no, there's a Nidus Worm and the Hydra is popping out. Quickly, Romulus, quickly defend! Quickly, Romulus! Oh, yes, with the infestation pit. Yeah, pick it off. Oh, no! Hydralis over there doing the counterattack! Quickly! Defend! 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 Oh, Broodlords are out. They're ready to do some pain. They're attacking the rocks while... Oh, my God! Defend! Defend! Come on, Romulus. Hang in there, Romulus. There are the Broodlords popping up. Pick that off. Yeah, show them who the boss is. But, oh, no! Oh, no! Romulus! Oh, my God! Don't you just want to go into a time travel and rewind back to the start of the game? Oh... Picking them off. Getting it done. Alright, the spine crawlers are advancing. Romulus, you have Brood Lords. What are you going to be doing with... Oh my god, Romulus! You're getting hit from all over the place. Quickly, Romulus, quickly. Defend, Romulus. Defend, defend. Get it. Get him with the drones. Get him with the drones. Take him out. Take him out. Oh, it wasn't in time. Romulus, quickly. Do damage with the Brood Lords, Romulus. Yes, take out the expansion with your Brood Lords and your infested Terrans. Oh... You lucky day nine made me do it. Oh my god, Romulus is getting revealed. I've never seen a naked Romulan before. The end. That's the replay. That was what was submitted. He played that game and said, you know what? Here's your fun day Monday, day nine. Sent it away in Monday at day nine TV. And there we go. That is the fail submission of the day. If you get a game like that, keep to yourself, Romulan. Uh, yes, I said it. I said it! Let's go on to a win game. Let's go on to a victory game. Let us go on to a game that is not quite at the level of Chef or Spanishua. But let us... Oh, it's not the swag game. It's the one with Panda in it. Yes. Fate himself versus Panda. Fate spawning in the bottom left corner. The gods themselves control this Zerg player versus Panda. I cannot make roaches, mutas, banelings, hydras, and only 12 zerglings max. And Panda's like, and hydras, just trying to add, you know, add his own little flair to the whole mix. And hydras, yeah, you know, and we're going to see a little bonding conversation. Yep. Fun day Monday, lols. And now we're going to see a little bit of a frown session. You don't need to tell me. Have you tried it? Nope. Boy, it's hard. Have fun raffle stomping me. And now comes an intense debate. The Alt-3 heart. I don't know if you guys knew about this, but all you gotta do is hold Alt and the numpad 3, and you make a heart. Easy for breezy. Let's see who the last person who messaged me is. Oh, no one's actually messaged me. Oh, cool. I would've given that person a heart. We're seeing now fate. Can't heart heart. Yep, Alt numpad 3. Look at him making hearts, asking how he makes a heart. No problem. Fate himself is now making as many queens as he can. Uh-oh, Bunker Rush getting easily taken down. Will you try to mess with fate itself? Panda now, gonna be advancing forward. Hmm. So we're seeing the command center get constructed. That's excellent. We're seeing more units get made. That's excellent, too. And we're seeing fate just try to make sure things don't get too thrown off course. Gonna build a spine crawler. Gonna expand with a creep tumor. Now, how does fate end up staying alive? 
How do any of you end up staying alive? That is the fundamental question to this Fun Day Monday, because you're just not allowed to build any units. So I was kind of assuming people would do like spine crawler mixes, you know, like spine crawler queens, maybe mass, mass, mass queen, maybe a lot of infestors. Let's see how Fate stays alive at the start of the game. He's getting his layer up. Excellent. We're seeing him not do anything with his command center quite yet. He's just making... <gasps> oh! A scout. Behead him. Send him back to the Northlands. All right, there is an army coming down. Panda! Panda! Moving down here. Panda, where are you going? And the panda's just like... Because pandas don't speak English. There's Fate. Fate trying to make as many spine crawlers as he can. Uh-oh, with the scan. Panda! <gasps> is he going for an attack? He's just going for these tasty bamboo shoots right here. Ooh, bamboo. Excellent. Moving on in. Here comes the panda. Here he comes. He's gearing up to attack. He's thinking about it. Okay. He's decided that that's exactly what he wants to do. Someone just messaged me, whoever that is. Gets a uh, numpad 3 heart. Otherwise, it looks like the Blizzard interface isn't going to let me do it. That's no big deal. I wanted to extend a heart to the community, so you know what? Why pick one person? Here you go, guys. It's for you. Now, if you're watching this live, and you have the chat, type some hearts. Just show a little bit of love. <laughs> Enjoy that one, mods. I just want to see the chat going absolutely crazy. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's so wonderful. <laughs> oh my god, the mods just turned the chat off. <gasps> That's so cruel, but if you're in an office, I want you to just turn to the guy next to you, just tap him. Hey, 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 hey. That's for you. That's for you. And whisper it. I want you to have you know, and I think that that's one of the best things to do uh, when you work in an office, because I know there's always the stipulations, you know, you have to have certain office rules of conduct, you don't want to offend anyone. Just every now and again, whisper something. I just want to see that effect that that has. Hey, hey, I have a question. Do you have a stapler? Let them be the interpreter, right? It's, it's a lot like poetry. I don't want to assign any meaning. I want it to be your expression coming out. So we're seeing the queens now swing around. Hey, hey, Panda. Hey, Panda, what you doing? I'm just swinging the units to his back door. And there he is. Oh, no, fate. Quickly, crisis. Burrow, burrow, burrow. Queens, attack, retreat, retreat, Panda. Panda, oh, burrow. All right, heal, heal, heal. All right, we're getting, we're getting some infestors. All right, come on, defend. Oh, queens coming out. All right, scoot up a little bit. Um, okay, not quite in range. Scoot up a little bit. Um, oh, uh, fate. Fate. I've never seen fate be indecisive before. Fate, just pull your spine crawlers back, fate. Panda. Oh, Pamba. He's just like, eating his bamboo. Um, it's bamboo I'm eating. It's imaginary. Let's go to the game. All right, good. Here comes fate. Here he comes, moving out. Oh, and what does he do? Oh, better spread the creep. Just lost my base. Spread the creep. Spread the creep. Fate, what are you going to do, man? You have absolutely no units. Well, let's just spread creep a little more. It's fine. It's not a big deal. That's cool. Fate may have given up on life. Oh, no, he's doing some killer pokes. Poke him again, Fate. Poke him again. Poke him again, Fate. Yeah. You want to mess? You you want to fuck around? Come on down to South. Come on down. Looks like Panda gonna retreat. <laughs> gonna hang out here at the rally point that can never be reached. Uh, oh, oh my gosh, that was cool. Did you see him? He was ice skating in place. <laughs> oh my gosh, what a little champion, man. Hope he doesn't fall. I hope you know what I mean. There are few things I think sadder in the whole wide world than when that poor 14-year-old ice skater falls at the Olympics when she goes to do her, like, quintuple axle with all her Russian coaches standing right there looking, and then she falls, and it's just like, well, her life's completely done. I guess they'll put her down. I guess they'll get a new gymnast and her new ice skater and put her in the stable. That's the way that that whole life chain works, you poor little Marine. Don't worry. We'll come back. There'll be a medevac. That will heal your heart and your soul. So Fate's going to respond by just expanding like crazy. Here he is spreading out his spine crawlers. Let's just go ahead and build some more spine crawlers. Yes, that's a good solution. 
So if at first you don't succeed, just build some more spine crawlers. We want to burrow here. Yeah, there we go. Just try to come in this side. I mean, I know you came in this way last time, but that's fine. Just give it a shot. I dare you. All right, poking it away. Just poking it down. Here come the spine crawlers advancing forward. And the scan from Panda with his... Oh! Getting taken out. Yeah. Yeah, let's throw some more. Yeah, take another one. Take another one. And there, it's finally enough to kill him off. Yeah. You show him who the boss is. Fate. And here is... Ooh, Panda. Panda knows how to macro. Panda definitely looking a little bit stronger than your average bear. Notice... How, how multi-layered that joke was. Just notice, these are the things that I want to do for you every Monday. I want you to be happy. Let's go back to the game. Here we see Fate, now adding on these extra extractors. Now it comes Fate. Oh, he's hiding at the right side of the map. Panda trying to knock down his river. A oh, rock stimming! Oh my gosh, stim! You don't want those creep tumors to run away! Oh, managed to catch them in the nick of time. Very good. All right, we see Fate wiggling his way forward. Fate advancing. Panda now gearing up to expand. It's always important to be acquiring more resources in any RTS game. Still working away at the rocks. Oh, miss. Oh, come on, get him. Gacking him up. Yes, teach him who the lesson is. Teach him who the lesson is? Again, this is something that happens a lot of times when you are a caster. For any of you uh, who haven't heard this little rant before, the way that casting works is I have an idea that I want to convey. Like, this is a really wide spread out map and there are a lot of counterattack paths. Just something that I kind of have an idea of. And I say, make sure we talk about that idea. And then I just start thinking about the next sentence. And whatever comes out of my mouth, I have to just work with. And a lot of times... It's really awkward the way the sentence comes out, you know? I would like to say a sentence like, This map is very open. Counterattacks are easy. That would be so simple. It's like, because of the open paths that Zelnaga has with counterattacks, they're easy. And a lot of people are like, Okay, that is a good point, but why so bumpy, Day9? Why so Alta Vista Babblefish Translator style coming out? Or one of my favorite things is when I just accidentally say the exact opposite of what I mean. In particular, this happened at MLG. It was uh, between Select and Kiwikaki, I think. And Select had this tiny, pathetic force. His entire army consisted of, like, a marine and a wet sock. And he was just going to kind of throw it. And the stalker would just go, ugh, ugh. <clears throat> blow his fucking head off, right? That was the stakes involved for the Terran Force. And Kiwi Kaki had, like, Colossi, and he had, like, Dark Archons from StarCraft 1, so he'd, like, mind control, and had, like, siege tanks. And he was rolling on in. And I was like, oh, horrible engagement for Kiwi Kaki. Whoops, said the wrong player, but I'm not gonna go, excuse me, I said the wrong thing. I went with it. I was like, terrible idea. What is Kiwi Kaki thinking? Is he high? Is that Canadian drunk? Oh, yeah, I like making mistakes, dude. Yeah, way to blow it, Kiwi Kaki. <gasps> By some miracle, he ended up winning the battle. That is how you save it. That is how, after saying the worst possible thing, you just go, Oh my gosh, Kiwi Kaki even blew my mind. Anytime you hear something that sounds obviously wrong, it's probably because I knew it. And I'm just rolling with it, man. You just got to run with it. It's just how it works. Running with it. Rolling with it. We'll talk more about such mistakes in the future. No big deal. So it looks like Panda trying to move in. Uh-oh. And he's going to scan. Discovering that there's creep here. All right. Well, let's go through that little chain of logic from Panda, shall we? All right. Let's go to the Panda cam. Vision Panda. All right. Is this stuff going to die? Ooh, ooh. All right. Is there creep here? Hmm, I'm not sure. Yep, there's Creep. So we now see Panda. He's building more missile turrets to help him detect the Creep. Uh-oh, looks like there was a wall still up there. Fate's notorious infestors cannot move out. So we're seeing Fate just build more spine crawlers, build more spine crawlers. 
No spine crawlers back here. The ice skating marine whose career is over. She's been left to die because she couldn't do the triple axle in the bottom corner. She's just sitting on top of goop. Her ice skates are getting all sticky. She's crying. And fate continuing to expand, just making more spine crawlers. <gasps> you devious raccoon, you fate. I didn't know you were a raccoon. How do you even play? That must be harder than Droopy the dog. But Panda, uh-oh. Let me spread some creep right in front of you. Quickly, before the planetary fortress is done. All right, good. All right, as planned. Quick, make a diversion. Here comes fate. Now, you could shut down mining with fungal growths or three to five infested terrans. He really does not want that guy mining from that natural expansion. Oh my goodness. He is not in the mood to let Panda mine. Rat tat 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 tat. Au revoir, and Panda looks like he's going to go ahead and sacrifice a couple of Marines as well. Here comes Panda. Oh, man, plan apparently the Planetary Fortress especially effective at killing off Queens and now sneaking around to the backside. Panda still having a huge food lead. A lot of minerals on the table for fate, but how will he spend them? <laughs> he can't. Maybe with some more spine crawlers. No big deal. He's going to end up trying to move out with more spine crawlers. Yes, go, drones. Go. Where are you going, guys? Where are you going? Guys, where are you going? You guys, you drones, you guys, that's fine. As long as they get there eventually, that is the motto. All right, fate, just throw down maybe one fungal growth. Yeah, maybe another fungal growth. Yeah, get him. Atta boy. Let's get another one in there. Yeah. Oh, 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 please, oh, please, oh, please, please, yes! And there he gets it down. Get him again. Give it to him again. Poor panda only has a ghost left. Excellent. Now, in this particular circumstance, we're seeing that Fate has only built infestors. He has 62 drones and 16 infestors. Holy crap. We're seeing the ghost advance forward. Can it possibly find any units? No! Panda, if you had any zerglings! Uh-oh, he would be able to defend. You see, you'll notice there, I said if Panda had any zerglings, how do I save it? I can't. But I still roll with it. I'm like, Panda, if you had any Zerglings, maybe that would have helped. Yeah, Terran, fucking idiot. Get some Zerglings next time, Panda. Oh my god. Seriously, if I had, like, some pencils in this pocket, I would just... Throw those down. Panda, why are you not building Zerglings? You have to roll with it. This is a common technique that you have to do. And then, when everything's said and done... Alright, Panda, alright. That was a supremely dumb, dumb, dumb move. I'll put all my paraphernalia back on, and I'll just keep on casting. <sighs> Not a big deal. Panda, why didn't you build any Zerglings? Uh-oh, uh-oh. Well, the Infestors are going to come. Maybe they'll be able to stop you. Oh! Getting out of the way. Did you see that EMP dodge? Let's get the instant replay on that moment. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Here come the Infestors. Fate, fate. Here he comes. Popping. And watch this fungal growth. And oh! Getting on out of the way. Look at that preemptive pre-fire. Who has his interp set low? His name's Fate. Beach balling it up. Beach balling his way to victory. And there it comes. There it is popping right on out. Killing him off. See you later. No big deal. All it cost was our expansion. Again. For like the third time this game. Not a big deal. You just take it again. Because you have 6,000 minerals in the bank. Now, if we go to the production queue, we're wondering, what is this? Oh, it's an ultralist cavern. Oh, oh. Panda with an army of death. He's been hitting his A buttons. He's been watching Slayer's Boxer play. He has Supply Depot thrown down willy-nilly. Looks like his Supply Depot placement was designed by a bunch of kindergartners who just um, splattered them all over the page like finger paint. Oh, getting gooped up. Getting re -gooped. See you later, Marines. Oh, there's a ghost. How many infestors did it hit? Just one. Oh, I think there's creep here. Very good. We're seeing fate. Continue to... Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Lose the spine crawlers. What will Panda do? How will Panda possibly be able to deal with it? Oh, my God. Did any of those connect? Did any of those connect? All right. Let's see here. Let's see. Let's count the number of infestors that got hit. Oh, one, two. Oh. Panda. Get some zerglings, buddy. Just rolling with it, man. How we do it. Fate now, trying to get his uh, guys back in position again. Spitting the gack up on him. And here's the spine crawler, continuing to advance. Uh-oh, uh-oh, oh no, oh no. Marines, oh my gosh, are they imbalanced or what? Now, Fate could possibly defend this expansion. 
The only thing you'll have to do is let it die first, and then it'll end up staying alive. God, who is this man? He is just a slippery eel when it comes to these EMP shots. He is just dodging all of them. Uh-oh. And now some ultras are popping out. Maybe being at 4K, 2K all game long was a boon to the success of our Zerg peoples. We see Fate re-expanding to his natural expansion again. We're seeing Panda uh, well aware that there's a little bit of a creep expansion sort of uh, encroaching okay. upon his territory. Okay. But we're seeing Fate continue to mass up. Fate, who said, boy is this style hard for Fun Day Monday. He's advancing. He's growing stronger by the second. Even an overseer is here to help detect ghosts. Not that he'd need it. He just keeps dodging them. He just keeps on dodging them. Now we're seeing Panda try to expand. Is there creep here? <gasps> Wait a minute. Where all these Ultralists come from? Oh, yeah. Oh, that feels so good. Oh, Ultralists swing their way. Oh, yeah. I'll get them. Oh, fate. Mmm. Mmm. How much purple is there? Oh, it's a lot of purple mana. Mmm. Mana. Mmm. Mana. There we're seeing more fate. Ultralist, move on in. Ooh, we hear some transfuses. Excellent. Hey, not quite as beautiful as maybe a Spanishua game or, you know, maybe something like a uh, chef game. But you know what? It was pretty nonetheless. That was a pretty, pretty game. That was pretty, pretty. Walking his way on in. And what will our Zerg player fate end up saying to his glorious opponent in battle? Transfuse is going on all about the map. Investors in a full-out retreat. <laughs> More spine crawlers. No reason not to build them. There it is. Moving on into the main. Picking things off. What do you got to say about that, Fate? GG. Well played. That might be my favorite moment of that whole game. When Fate, you know, was just like, come on, please. I lost another base. Oh, come on, please. He's just praying. He's crossing his fingers. He's full of hope. And his hope worked. Pfft, well played! Yeah, nice game. A really great game. And I will say that in my history of playing games, that has been one of my biggest motivations, for instance, for smurfing, is when, let's say, I woke up. It was a terrible day. I went to the coffee shop. I went to Starbucks. And I was like, I'd like a caramel macchiato. And they're like, we're out of coffee. I'm like, you're out of coffee? They're like, yeah, we ran out. You can have a cup, though. I was like, yeah, just give me a cup. I'm just sitting there. <sighs> With my air, again, this is a coffee cup, imaginary in my hand. Everything's terrible. I go to class, and they're like, we're having a pop final exam. I'm like, oh, pop final exam. This class is so hard, and it's in Hindi. Oh, it's a bad game, a bad day. So we continue, and I go home, and then it's time to play a game on the ladder. I'm just, I want one to relax. I hop on day nine. I play a game. And what comes out of my fingers? The worst game of all time. I build two overlords as my starting units, right? I build an overlord, then I build another overlord. And I'm like, am I really at 13 of 26 food? Yeah, you are, Day9, because you built two overlords. You know, one of those things. And I come back to my base. Why did I build two roach warrens? Oh my god, do I really have two guys in my gas geyser? Who Did I research Neuroparasite before? My plus 25 energy for Infestors. You all have games like this. How many of you forgot to research Storm and you find out when your Templar get to battle? I'm going to send my Siege tanks forward. Where is Siege mode? Wait a minute. My Medivac got to his base and it's empty. Yes, everyone has had that fail moment. Every single person in the whole wide world, especially when Starbucks ran out of coffee that morning. And I play that game and I'm just like, this is terrible. And I leave the game, and you know what my opponent says? Hey, great game, Day 9! Hey, you want to play some practice matches? And I'm like, I'm, I'm ashamed right now. I don't want to practice. This is terrible. I actually want to go cry and clutch my stuffed animal to my bosom. And he's like, ah, don't worry about it, man. I'll add you, and we'll play all sorts of games later. Do you want to be best friends? Here's my email address. Here's new photos of me at family vacation. You're so cool, Day 9. And I'm like... I just lost a game. If I were having a good day, I'd, I'd be happy to maybe play another one, but I just I just had the worst moment of my whole life. I was trying to fiddle with my mouse settings 
when you dropped my main and I didn't notice. It's important that you now hear the story of the most fail game of all time. Um, for any of you who played the original Brood War, yeah, it's one of those stories. Who was playing under the name Day9? Oh yeah, this guy. Making it nice and public. Ooh, yeah. Because I was dumb back then. And I just decided to do one of those ladder games. I'm sure all of you have a game like this where you're at like 699 points. And you think, I'll just play a fast game, get over 700. Yeah, just a, just a fast one. Just a little tiny game, just to get over 700 points. It was one of those I was playing on Icy Cup. Just play a little tiny game. But you know what? I was going to bed, so I'll just cheese him. Right? I'll just, I'll just cheese. It won't be a big deal, right? So that's what I started to do. I did the infamous one hatch lurker rush. For any of you who didn't know, lurkers were a game in StarCraft II, or excuse me, Brood War, that evolved from the Hydralisk. That's how it started. Hydralisk, then you get a layer, and you upgrade lurker at your Hydralisk den. And you morph your Hydralisk into lurkers, and they attack while burrowed. Mmm, how amazing. So then, what happens? Well, you have to know those essential timings. Start your Hydralisk Den when the layer is halfway done. I build not one, not two, but three Hydralisk Dens. When I'm one hatch lurker rushing, one hatch, I have one base! And it takes up 75% of a screen. One base! And one of the Hydralisk Dens was built touching another one of the Hydralisk Dens. And I only have like 13 drones. I was noticing, I was like, man, I'm low on money. Oh, I have a second, I have a third Hydralis den. And you know how many times you can simultaneously research a Lurker upgrade? None. You can do it simultaneously. So I have two Hydralis dens that, of course, helped wall off my base a little bit, helped constrict movement. No big deal. But when I moved out, I was short on one Lurker. Oh my gosh, it was so bad. And right when I move out, what button do I hit to burrow? Well, the U button burrows Lurkers, but I was hitting the I button. I, I, I am not burrowing any of my fucking lurkers right now. So he kills off all my lurkers, and because this player is so bad, you know what he does after my lurkers are done? He scans, he scans the corpses of the lurkers and types LOL. These glasses are going to be coming off a lot in this story. I am having a horrific, and you know what I was actually trying to do during this game? I was trying to set up a recorded video. I was trying to record just this one, just one little game, and when I hit record, you know what color my screen turned? Orange. It like inverted all the colors on my screen, except for one box in the top right. It was normal color, and it was orange and bright pink and yellow everywhere else. It's all cyan and magenta, like bright, enormous colors that eight-year-olds have on their backpacks because that's cool. But it's not cool when you're trying to play a game. So then I just like, all right, I'm screwed. I have to just, you know, I have to get Defilers out for Dark Swarm and Plague. That's the only way I'm going to win this game. Who builds two Defiler Mounds? This guy, all right? So I'm on two bases, and I'm trying so hard, and he has seven bases. He has his main, his natural, the other main, the other main's natural, and a third main, and that main's natural, and just another base. And I'm on two bases, and it's close. That's how awful this player was. It's a really close game, because he has seven bases and just can't quite close the nail on the coffin. And finally, after a 35-minute battle, I have to leave the game. And I want to just rip my heart out and drop kick it into a pool full of piranhas and just be like, just do it. Do your thing. I don't care. I don't need that anymore because I am ashamed. And what do I get after that? Great game, Day 9! Oh! I've added you to my friends list every single day. Hey, what's up, Day 9? Let's play another game. And you know where that replay got uploaded? To, like, every single replay site of all time. And it's like 150,000 downloads. And no one, of course, goes like, hey, he built three Lurker Dens. Maybe his focus is a little off. Everyone's like, three Hydralis Dens that early? That doesn't seem like a very legitimate play. I'm supposed to be doing Funding Monday right now, aren't I? I'm reliving like this horrific memory. How long have I been doing that for? This was like a 10 minute long rant. I'm going for 53 minutes. I still have two games left to do. Wow. Wow. Whoa. <sighs> Never been a better time to bust that one out. But you, know, you guys get what I mean, right? You get what I mean. And I lost the game and I didn't get over 700 points. <sighs> All right, sweet. Let's go on to the next game of Fun Day Frickin' Monday. I can't believe Starbucks would ever run out of coffee. 
who is going to be the next game? Ah, oh, yes, none other than... Uh, I know it's somewhere up here at the top. Yeah, that's it. That's the one. We got this one, and then we got one more. All right, we have Omni, the aggressive hyper Zerg. What league is he in? Not Masters, not Grandmasters, not even Diamond, I don't think. The caliber of play is going down. <gasps> the quality of entertainment is going up. Let's check out the game. Omni in the right position as the blue Zerg. In the north, we have Meon Z. Meon. Meon. Did he take the word neon and make it meon? I don't know. Is it like meon? You on? You on? Me on? Z! Where did he get the name from? But that's fine. His on is in the top corner. So we're seeing Supply Depot get built and then get cancelled and then get built again. We're seeing the Scout drone pass through the center of the map. Ah, checking for any proxies. I see Omni continuing to build drones up. What will be in store? Well, we're seeing him move right through this hole in the wall off. You'll note that, yep, there's a little hole right there. Sorry, Meon, but your wall and isn't even ultralisk proof. There's the hole right at the top. You cancelled your depot and said, let me build it so that way drones can get on through. And there they could get on through just marched right on in like it was a ride at Disneyland with no line cheering his way in and you know what's a good place to take your natural expansion in his main base Omni getting scouted immediately oh my gosh -na -na -na. -na -na -na. what does Meon do well First, he's going to finish the barracks up. What is his tech path going to be? Okay, panic ensuing. He needs to get that orbital command immediately. You need to have resources. There's the Marine getting constructed. Omni whacking away and whacking away and building a bunker. Omni, are you going to cancel? Do you have any intention at all of canceling that? It doesn't look like it. Omni is getting his spawning pool, continuing to make drones. Because you have to be able to support this hatchery because it will not be mining for quite some time. There's the Marine going down. The hatchery is almost done. And it finishes. And the Queen gets started. And Zerglings get constructed. But keep in Mind. You cannot build more than 12 Zerglings the whole game long. Meon, how is he going to respond? Well, he's getting two barracks out. A smart way to respond. He is saving up money. Not a smart way to respond, but that's what he's doing anyways. And there is... Oh, no! And he gets back in with just five health alive. But Omni is going to be building some spine crawlers in there. He's trying to get another set of Zerglings out. Another bunker to back up and defend this bunker. Oh, a third bunker coming down. Rallying the Queens. Maxing them on out. Oh my gosh, Omni has Mr. Stretch Arm Spine Crawlers picking him off. Ah, Queen, hide, hide. Oh, she tried to poop out a cre creep tumor, but to no avail. Looks like me, I'm trying to just kill this single freaking bunker off. Oh, Broodlings come on in. But now, what advantage does Omni have now that that one hatchery is dead? Well, he has a couple more space to build these Spine Crawlers. But it looks like Meon doing a little fun day Monday of his own, expanding not to his natural, but to somewhere else. And here comes, oh, and he doesn't kill anything! Meon, look out! There's spine crawlers in your mace, dude. And oops, misclicked with a little bit of the creep spread. Repair, oh no. <gasps> Meon, you are in a little bit of trouble. Advance, advance with the spine crawlers. All right, cool, has he taken gas geysers? Only just now starting, expanding to his natural doing poking and poking and oh marines don't do so well when they load up into a bunker and then immediately suicide but that's exactly what we're seeing Meon do he's rallying to the only mineral patch that is almost in range of the spine crawler but maybe he just wants to mine this out as quickly as possible look out oh no offensive creep tumoring Ooh, with the transfuse spreading creep in your main and Meon there's a base in your base yo dog I heard you like bases so we just went ahead and killed you at the 9 minute and 25 second mark with spine crawlers. Lulz. So Neon. Oh! In the Terran tech tree, buildings are allowed to lift off. This gives you a very strong tactical advantage, both with offense and with dying. And with not having your main around anymore. Wait, was that the... Don't tell me. Don't tell me. Is that true? Oh my gosh, Neon. Losing the orbital command, and for any of you who did not know, every orbital command dies, leaving behind a hairdryer. Uh, here's a little bit of an Easter egg, and there it is. This is the hairdryer that pops on out. You can even see that it is a hairdryer. Yep, there it is, the Terran hairdryer. I don't exactly know why every single orbital command uh, crafts out a hairdryer upon death, but we're seeing Meons with a riveting counterattack, and it looks like Omni gonna re-expand to the south end himself. 
And there he is, getting killed off. Oh my god, if only I could make any units at all to defend. This Monday Monday is hard. Hang in there, Omni. You got this. Don't worry about it, man. You just got a couple more bases. You're going to be fine. And there he is, killing them off. LOL. Yeah. And there they are, getting eliminated, annihilated in the top corner. SCV is coming in. Meons going all in. No big deal. He's retaking an expansion. He's doing a little bit of interior redecorating, trying to figure out where he wants these barracks to be. He apparently wants them to be hiding right now. The drones are going to be moving on up. You know what's my favorite place to take a natural expansion? Hey, how's your old main doing? Hey, I love your old main. It feels so good. Too bad all the SCVs and Marines and drones. You see that? The third thing that I said was what I wanted to say. The SCVs, er, I mean the Marines. How do I call that a Marine? How does that happen? Whew, it's something you have to embrace failure as a caster. You just have to get around that. You know what? I'm not going to be a well. We see Neons eliminating the main of Omni with his Marines. He is starting by attacking the Geysers, one of the foundational linchpins of Zerg strategy. Meanwhile, Zerg is just maxing out on anything he does want to build. There is the hatchery getting getting gotten up. There is the drones eagerly awaiting. And Meons read a strategy guide or two. He was in a dark alleyway and some guy said, Come here, come here. You wanna know how to win? Oh no, it's Imba. Marines. Marines are imbalanced. Marines. And let's just take another look. We're noticing, huh, huh. No gas has been mined. Stim, no. Combat shield, no. I mean, in that dark alleyway, Meon asked the stranger, but when I build those Marines, should I get Stim or should I get combat shield? And the stranger said, no. Ah, I'm starting to understand now. And of course, if we opened up the keyboard, we would uh, immediately note that some of the keyboard's dying words uh, going on in this game. Let's just open up Notepad. There we go. Hey, I understand how the strategy works. Yep, A, 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 building some Marines. Yes, very good. In the meantime, the creep spread. Serving is a very excellent distraction because it looks like Terran knows about this base. Uh-oh. Oh, oh, no. In the production, we see more Marines getting made. More depots getting made, running right on into the fray. Ugh, not looking so good. In the in the unit station, we see 91 to 20. No big deal. He's got this. Infestation pit. Oh, I'll just rebuild another infestation pit. Hey, getting pathogen glands. Not a bad idea when we're approaching the 20-minute mark. Oh, Meons. Man, you gotta, you gotta build another command center, so that way you can keep on making Marines. Let's just go ahead and look at his input list. Let's just go ahead and see what that looks like. See? Playing Terran's easy. This is the easiest race in the world. Fantastic. Alright, and here he comes. Omni, what you doing, man? Oh, oh, I poop on you! Get him! Show him what's up, Omni! He just loads on in and... Oh, he just sort of floats on away. Excellent, excellent. So good. And creep takes a long time to dissipate, so here he comes. 124 food to 30 food. I believe in you, Omni. And uh-oh, Omni has a seemingly impenetrable, impenetrable defense. Meons, are you going to get stim or combat shield first? No. Good. We see he's massing up some infestors at the top of the base. Here comes the scout barracks. Alright. I'm starting to learn how to play Terran. Might want another barracks in there as well. Good. Fantastic. And here he comes. There's the scan. Uh-oh. Oh, fungal growth! Oh! Get fungled harder, Omni! Get gooped! Get gooped! Get gooped! Oh my god! Damn! Lol! And his response? Well, Marines seem to be the plan. Uh oh, uh oh! Beats bald! And blast him through! Come on, goop him up! Goop him up! Goop him up! Get him! Goop him! Or just make more infested Terrans! Come on, goop him! Give him the goop! Give him the gack! Make him sticky! Come on! Splat him! Fungal growth him. Make him green. Make him green, baby. Wait a minute. This looks like a familiar play. Meons, where are you going to take your natural expansion? 
not at my natural. Why would I do that? It's a lot harder to protect that with just Marines. You want to have it all the way over there. So that way your Marines get exercised. Very good. Excelente. All right, we're seeing Neons. Still making a lot of Marines. There's the scan. Gonna be picking off as many. Oh, an infested Terran. Retreat! Retreat! All right, he's now dead. We can continue to advance our forces. Neons landing. Making more mules. Okay. We see Omni. Well planted to take the old natural expansion of his opponent. Excellent. Meons rallying, building SCVs. Woo! We rallying SCVs. What? A refinery? I mean, seriously. I mean, seriously. Like, this is one moment where, like, I would just seriously highlight that moment. Like, are you sure? Are you positive? This doesn't really seem consistent with, like, you know, the rest of my build. But that's fine. You know, it's important to do some deviations. Never take gas in your main base. Always take it the expansion. That way you'll convince them that you're being a smart player and taking all the gases in your main. And here comes the Infestor push. Infestor's only giving them the green. Make them green. Making them green. As a Ooh. Omni, I believe in you. I believe. I believe. Yeah, getting them. Take them down. Yeah. More dead. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And this is what always stinks when you're, like, really, really low on opponent army. You have to, like, fungal growth a single marine. Look, here they come. Whoop. He's going to be beach balling it up. Here comes the T button. Oh! Oh! CB's getting taken out on me! Ah! Going crazy with all of the investors. Looking good, looking great. SCVs getting made. And what is your response, Meons? Wow, wow, look at that. Look at that. I would just like to say his response looks something like that. Oh, does it look a little bit like this? Oh. Here come more investors. Taking that down. Double Gakken. Is it going to be the only spellcaster victory for her? The only spellcaster for the first time ever. Omni takes the food lead with a whopping 53 food at the 28 minute mark. But don't worry, there's another expansion here from Meons. He's looking great. He's looking good. Here it comes. Infested Terrans versus real Terrans. Everyone loses. Scout Barracks still doing a little bit of scouting. And of course, uh, we're seeing Omni just try as hard as he can to end this game. The Queen's finally coming in now. The game getting cleaned up. And you know what? This is what we call learning. Let us examine learning as it happens. I need battle cruisers. Don't you love that? Isn't that great? So, so tell me about your build. Tell me about your build, Meons. I'm a little curious about how your build went. Well, uh, let me tell you about some of my thoughts. It's an effective strategy. It works at essentially all levels. Um, I, I essentially build uh, some of the more popular units for Terran, the Marine. But it hasn't been working, so I'm tempted to build some battle cruisers. But don't worry, uh, you know, it's not going to require that many different letters. I mean, I, I'm used to using these letters from hiding command centers around the map. So that's great. Uh, you know, we call that eating in on the on the tech tree. You just start from the edges and work your way to the middle tier. Uh, if the battle cruisers don't work, he'll try marauders, and if that doesn't work, he'll try ravens. Excellent, excellent. It's always a big danger uh, not to not to over 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 accommodate for you know adjustments. Let's go ahead and look at the final game that we have on the menu for today. We are going to look at a well played game between Charlemagne, the enemy in the bottom left, and the Day 9 Daily Viewer, Cree! Cree! K-R-E-E, -E, Cree! Cree! He has his own battle cry built in. Oh my god, good luck, have fun, you two. Cree meeting pretty ladies up in the coffee shop. Hello, darling, there was no coffee today at Starbucks. I was wondering if you wanted to go to another coffee shop. What's your name? Oh, my name's Cree! That's so awesome. Even say that at the Starbucks, Cree, and how's that spelled? Um, K-R, and then however many E's you want. Make for a fun time as the barista. So we're seeing Charlemagne spawn in the bottom left. Let's see the logic that occurs at the lower levels. Please stop squeaking, little chair. Oh my goodness. There's the spawning pool going down from Charlemagne. He's trying to get a 10 pool going. We're going to see the most aggressive Zerg opening of all time. Charlemagne himself, he was the ruler 
of something. But I'm not a history buff. I'm just a man with a webcam and a microphone. So he is the ruler of something very important. It probably was ancient France. Looks like now we see Charlemagne building a spawning pool. He's trying to prevent this drone from scouting, but it looks like the drone has scouted it over a hundred times. And we're going to see Charlemagne. Build a set of Zerglings. Going to wait till he has two overlords up. He's at 14 of 26. Again, it happens to everyone, and it happens to Charlemagne, too. Charlemagne, uh-oh, Cree! In absolute panic. He's trying to get a queen. He's trying to mine gas. He's trying to defend. He has to be wary. Man, these players really love pulling all their drones off of mining, and we're seeing the infamous 10 pool and to hang out until two overlords are done and to wait at the top of your ramp until you have an amount of Zerglings that you're kind of satisfied with. An intimidating push, indeed. Indeed, Charlemagne gearing up to mount the most massive offensive ever created, and there he goes. This is a that we do as a ruler of ancient France. We see Cree now trying to advance to the higher levels of tech. Uh oh, the huge assault coming up. The drones trying to get into the fray. Do you have enough money to keep that layer going, Cree? I worry about you. He's trying to pull out and do a massive retreat. Some Zerglings getting made. These are the first six Zerglings from Cree. <gasps> His spine crawler is taking massive damage. Oh no! Cree. Barely staying alive. Alright, good. It looks like he didn't need to cancel that layer. Well, that's fine. We see Charlemagne mounting an offensive with a couple more Zerglings. And how is Charlemagne going to transition? My god, he's making more Zerglings. My god. Alright, and there it is. We see more Zerglings coming out. Kree is going to respond by getting speed for the unit he's only allowed to make 12 of in this daily. There's a queen popping out right now. <gasps> the Zerglings manage to sneak by! No! They have to retreat because there's a massive Zergling offensive coming in. The 10 pool. It never stops getting a perfect surround. Picking off one of the spine crawlers. Will the second one survive? Oh! And the queen pops on out. Whew, vomiting her larva. And how will Charlemagne follow this up? More Zerglings rallied to the other guy's base. Very good. And Kree responding by saying, Man, if two spine crawlers aren't enough, maybe I should build two spine crawlers twice. Ooh, running them around. All right. And it looks like maybe a peace treaty will be reached. Yes, seven drones getting thrown down by Charlemagne. Whew, man, whoever thought that you could do a 10 pool into a 10 pool into a 10 pool. Charlemagne shows us. That's how they do it in ancient France. In between each one of them, he had a baguette. I'm so funny. There we see getting the spore crawler down to that, so that way he can defend against incoming, um, uh, I guess overlords could be a threat. So he wants to make sure that no scouting goes on there. Looks like both players getting their layers up. Uh oh, an attempted expansion hatchery. Oh! Charlemagne does not like. And now we're going to see a lot of queens get made. Cree, how will you take your expansion? That is a question I must know. And it looks like your solution is to just not take that expansion. <gasps> An infestation pit going down. An overseer. Oh, yes, very good. An overseer. What other plans do you have in store? Your money's getting quite high, Cree. Oh, yet more overseers. An expand going down by Charlemagne as well. Oh no, Mutilus coming up. <gasps> the Mutilisks set to rally right past the Overseers. Oh no, Kree's plan will get shot down. There they are, sneaking their way in. Did the Mutilisks see us? I don't think so. I don't think so. They're like Tyrannosaurus Rexes. As long as you aren't moving, they can't see you. But, but we were moving. My god, they're not T-Rexes after all. Either way, it looks like Kree gonna move his way in. <gasps> Gacking up the lair, and the Mutilus try to move in, but the Overlord-proof main, equally Mutilus-proof sea layer Charlemagne, and oh, the Onslaught, Kree! Kree doing some damage. The Zerglings try to move up. Transfuse, transfuse, abuse, transfuse. Oh, come on, transfuse. Oh no, missing another transfuse. Transfuse again! 
No! Transfuse again! Cree! Retreat! Retreat! Team! Fall back! Oh, infested Terrans. Finally finish it off before dying themselves. But that's fine. Cree doing his thing. Both players. In the resource station, we see that they are at 34 of 114 and 24 of 84. That is so many overlords. I mean, some of you are kind of blown away at probably how low the food count is. I'm blown away at how high the max food pop is. 114. What are all of you guys doing here? Wow. Cree, we call that planning ahead or bad. 114, that will really help for when you're building the Broodlords and Infestors and Drones and Queens. That's fine. You're planning ahead. Or it's bad. It's fine. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Kree advancing on in, picking off this hatch. Oh, yeah, gooping up that hatch. Gack up that one. Yeah, come on back. Give that one the gack. Come on. Come on. Smack him with the gack. Give him the, give him the contaminate. Get him that E button. Yeah, can't you be building nothing? And then it finishes, and the Hydrals come on down. Yeah, gacking up that one as well. Now we're going to fly all the way on home, feeling extremely, extremely awesome. Kree's going to make another hatchery. This will allow him to do not that much, because he cannot build Zerglings, Roaches, Banelings, Mutalists, or Hydralists. And uh-oh, Charlemagne trying to move in with an attack. Oh, losing the natural expansion. That's fine. Broodling's going to do a little bit of damage. Trying to throw down some beach balls, cleaning it up. Oh, Charlemagne. Oh, taking this base. Charlemagne. And now comes a period of absolutely nothing. Yes, building the spine crawlers. Oh, the efficiency. If we are maxed on minerals, no reason to save that. G -g 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 yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Gacking that up. Yes. Yes, indeed. We see Hydro's trying to move in the front. All right, good. All right. All right. Unit counting station. One Muta, seven Hydras. Unit counting station. Eight Infestors. Alright. How much more time we got? Oops. How much more time we got? Alright. We're about halfway done. Good. Good. Oh, the mass Scout with the guys. Alright, good. Got some Mutalists coming out. Alright. Alright, we're getting a Hive. Alright. Oh, Mutalists, no. Alright. Alright, just, just pull back. Just pull back. A lot of what I would call non-aggression packs going on at the non-diamond levels. You know, people who are just like, all right, no, we, we did our thing. We had our fun with the 10 pool after the 10 pool after the 10 pool. Just, I'm done. I'm done with it. Let's not, let's not, let's not fight. Let's be friends. And now Kree getting ready to do the onslaught. What does Charlemagne have? Oh my gosh, look at that hive progress. Oh, look at Charlemagne. Damn this game. I blame Day J. Excuse me, I use brackets as my delimiter, not parentheses. Cree! Oh, but look at this. The Greater Spire going down for Cree. The Greater Spire going down for Charlemagne. And here it comes. Here comes the moment of truth. The moment of anything. The moment of something at least a little bit not dry. That's okay. Oh, look at him just continuing to do masses of overseer goop. And look, he's scouting the same main he scouted all the time. He's not going to scout this fully saturated base, or this fully saturated base, or this fully saturated base. He's going to check out the main. Anything new going on here? Well, maybe. Man, you got to have a lot of focus to kill all those zerglings off. Look at him telling them to dance. Did you guys see that happy little dance? It's like so fun with the zerglings. Look at him. Here they come. Oh, doing a little spin move. Yeah, awesome. But that's fine. I mean, Charlemagne has just figured that he's had enough scouting. Not the biggest deal in the world. And here comes Broodlords. And uh-oh, what's coming out of Charlemagne? Oh my god, Charlemagne making corruptors of his own. Not doing anything at all. Here it comes. Oh my gosh, the Doom Push. If you thought the Colossus Gateway Phoenix Void Ray Death Ball was the true Death Ball of StarCraft II, you are wrong, my friend. The Broodlord Infestor Queen Death Ball ripping everything apart, ripping out his heart. Oh my goodness, Charlemagne has so much more food. And there's the target fire. Transfuse! And there's the target fire. Still trying to pick off one, and still trying to pick it off, and he can transfuse! Oh my god, and the Broodling's popping out. But what is this? Is there anything coming up? Oh, eight Broodlords from Charlemagne. And I think none of you are prepared for the dumbest possible fight in all of StarCraft II. Here it comes. Oh, Infestor is leading the fray. 
doing tons of damage. Oh my gosh, the Broodlord's ripping apart the Infestors! And what do the Broodlords do? They fire at the Broodlings being made by the other Broodlords. And then these Broodlords fire at the other guy's Broodlings being made by the other guy's Broodlords. Huh. Hmm. That's really something, isn't it? Oh, it's still going on. I mean, I haven't, I haven't paused it. It's, you know, oh, look, let's make some more Broodlords. We're clearly not winning the sway in the Broodling versus Broodling. Oh, it, the Corruptors! I was making more Broodlords. Best day ever! Cree doesn't scout other bases. Look at this. Oh, look at, look at, look at Charlemagne with the triple spire play one spire per base because you never know when you're going to need another spire now charlemagne instead of canceling and winning the corruptor fight just lets him finish into brood lords at which point he'll maybe win the brood link oh he'll die oh damn he's going to be trying to make some more corruptors now again after you open up with a triple hidden spire, we like to open up to a triple hidden greater spire. You see? Because you never know when you're going to need another greater spire. Because I can upgrade from one, I can upgrade from another, and then I just have a third one. Not not including the, the fourth one. So, again, alright, who's going to come out on top? Well, the Corruptors, who don't even participate in the Broodling battle. Excellent. Excellent, and... Oh! And Kree's Broodlings are winning the day! Oh my god! Kree! Kree! Moving out with a very threatening force, and now, oh my gosh, look at this Kree spreading creep inside the base of Charlemagne! How brutal is that? But oh no. Kree spawn the hatcheries, gacking this one up, gacking that one up. Seven Corruptors getting made from Charlemagne <gasps> in the Corruptor Counting Station. I know it's the unit counting station, but now we're going to use it to count Corruptors. It's 20 Corruptors from our red player, Kree, and 20 Corruptors from our blue player, Charlemagne. Uh-oh, a Zergling counterattack. But my spine crawlers are easily going to be able to hold off your Zergling, Charlemagne. What's he going to do? Oh, oh, he's going to walk right past them and there he is picking off every drone that ever lived he's going to be doing some target firing here and what will Cree do he's going to continue to advance forward the tank like queens <gasps> 26 corruptors out right now for charlemagne and indeed we see that charlemagne does even have the lead in the food count and is in the main right now. Oh no, the hive. Oh, he could kill the greater spire, but he's going for the hive right now. And here come the corruptors from Kree. Oh no, that is a lot of corruptors. A couple of them fly the wrong way. And here it is, corruptor versus corruptor battles. The queens are in the fray. And there it is, the target fire in the heel, and the target fire in the heel, and oh, it's an invincible corruptor. Oh, oh, so Kree going to continue to advance. He's expanding behind the other guy's expansion. Very good. We're going to see more Broodlings pop on out. We see more Corruptors pop on out. As you'll know, this is the dumbest kind of battle that you will ever see. Oh, better get some Broodlords to battle against the other guy's Broodlings that he's making. Just buying ourselves some more time. Uh-oh, uh-oh, here comes the fight. Oh, no, getting Fungal Growth as well. Kree with a Death Ball of Death. Thank God there are all these greater Spires here that will allow Charlemagne to rebuild. The endless, undestructible force. The stream of broodlings marching on in. I don't know if you guys knew the broodlings were awesome, but I think you do now. And here comes kind of an awkward moment where you're Charlemagne and you're like, Alright, cool. I need a regroup to be able to defend against this attack. What are these drones doing here? Oh, excuse us. We're just going to sneak around this spawning pool if you don't mind us. Uh, if you don't mind us. Oh, that's not ours. Don't worry about it. It's not something that you really need to be concerned about. Cree. Oh, no. Cree. Oh, look at him. Trying to pull back all his drones. A ferocious single drone from Charlemagne bringing a lot of pain up to that northern... Whoops. Whoopsie daisies. Charlemagne with the infested Terran bomb picking off one of the greater spires. There's another one here. Is that one over there still left? No. It looks like only two of the initial four remain. 
Charlemagne, Charlemagne. Once upon a time you ruled Portugal, but now you are no more. A couple mutilists trying to target fire. Getting picked off. Good game. Cree with the lulls. And that, my friends, I would like you to note is the dumbest way that a Broodlord on Broodlord Battle can go them firing at each other's freaking Broodlings. And even at the lower levels of StarCraft 2 do we find riveting levels of entertainment. Isn't that glorious? Now, even though I know all of you loved, loved, loved the most impossible Fun Day Monday ever, that was today's one, where if you don't die, you win with the most indestructible force Broodlords ever made, I would like you to note that... Next week is 2v2 week. It'll be starting on Sunday, going all the way until Thursday, because that is the week's schedule of the Day 9 Daily. So for next week's Fun Day Monday, I would love it if you submitted a game of you with the worst 2v2 ally of all time. It could be you being the worst ally of all time, such as walking into your opponent's base and spreading creep tumors in there. And we're not talking about people using potty mouth language or something like that. We're talking about people being the worst ally of all time because I'm sure some of you have had this experience where, I don't know, say, you're playing with your friend. He's like, yeah, let's 2v2 some. And you're like, all right, cool. And you get in the game and he goes, you know, um, spawning pool, good. And then he goes gas. And you're like, all right. And then he goes gas. And you're like, okay. And he starts making some zerglings. You're like, he's going to make a queen? And he's like, hold on. 20 minutes pass. Do you, are you going to do anything? Dude, you're. I'm trying to have a fun game here. You know, we want to see one of those. Maybe you're forced into a 1v2 position. Either way, whatever you like for your definition. Worst 2v2 ally of all time. To Monday at Day9.tv. That's going to be awesome. For tomorrow's Newbie Tuesday, it is all about stealing a build. Watch Day9 Daily number 285. Steal that build and show me the process that you did to do it. Include the original game that you stole the build from. Your building groupings, your unit mixing groupings, and all the replays of refinement. A full replay pack is what I want. That's going to wrap it up for Funday Monday. Thanks for tuning in. Ah, oh, See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow.